Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I'm going live. I hear a little bit of feedback on Alan's audio. Probably next time I'm going to have him wear headphones. But I just want everybody to know that if it wasn't for Chili DeCastro, we wouldn't be here right now talking to you. And I know there's a lot of people with a lot of questions. They're really worried. They're really concerned about him. I just want you all to know that uh, you don't have any reason to worry. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who care about him, and we're not going to let him suffer. So just remember that, everybody. You know, when you have friends who care about you, that they're going to be there to help you. That's the whole point. So let me just really quick go over to comments. All right. So I have... Uh, First question I have, Greg B, are you local to Chile? Answer, yes. But I want to get into this for all the people who are online right now so they can understand what happened. So everybody, Chile's a buddy of mine. Look, he comes off kind of crazy to some people, but Chile's out fighting for your rights. Chile is not a phony. Chile really believes in what he's doing. and like the, the the old school guys, the uh, sovereign citizens from back in the 80s and 90s, he's the new guy with the camera. And without a law degree and without going to an academic institution, you may not know to know how to act. It would be like a blue collar guy going to a really expensive wedding, a really expensive party. He's not going to know proper protocol to eat, how to eat or how to do whatever. But what he's doing spiritually in my opinion is the right thing he is trying to teach people how to protect their rights and he's been through hell he's been falsely arrested multiple times i know there's a lot of people out here who can't stand him whatever that's fine but as a lawyer from my perspective i can see both sides because a lawyer has to be able to argue both points of view i have my friend alan beck on here as well he's a first amendment expert and he's better at law than me He's an appellate law attorney, so I have him here to provide some fire support. What brings Alan and I together is we're both former U.S. Marines, and we're loyal, and we believe in duty, honor, and country. And I just want to tell everybody right now, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to save because you never know when the thought police are going to take down this channel. But I also want you to learn something else. Look, I'm not here offering legal advice. Alan's not giving you legal advice. We're here as historians and scholars and as reporters to help you understand what's going on. If you want legal advice, you have to hire a lawyer. I'm only licensed to practice law in California and Texas. Alan's only licensed to practice law, as far as I know, in California and Hawaii. So we're not offering any legal advice. So just put that aside and look at us as lawyers who have enough cojones to come out and talk about what happened in Chile. So what I want to do is really quick i just want to play this video for you of what happened uh to chile and we'll go from there so just give me one second to get this thing going we get it queued up and it should be playing now all right all was in castro So you can see people are clearing out of the courtroom. It's a trial by judge. Are you Mr. DeCastro? Can you turn off the phone, please? So everybody really quick. So Alan, uh, really quick. I just want to tell everybody. So this is a trial by judge. Can you kind of like help, help me explain to my audience, our audience, the difference between a trial by judge and a trial by jury possibly. Sure. Uh, this is colloquially known as a, a bench trial, which as uh, Mike said, is a, um, trial by judge. And, uh, you know, what's, uh important there is a uh, you know a jury tends to uh determine uh both factual issues 
and ultimately whether a person is innocent or guilty. When you have a, a bench trial, the judge makes those determinations. And uh, so here you're not being judged by your peers, you're being judged by an elected official, ultimately. Right, so everybody, I just want you to understand something. So a trial by judge is similar to what you would have in a small claims court where the amount in controversy doesn't exceed a specific amount. So you're allowed to have a trial by judge or you can just stipulate to a trial by judge. You can just agree, hey, I just want to have a judge try the case for whatever reason, which would be similar to a uh, uh, underinsured, uninsured motorist case where you would have a trial with a arbitrator. So it's, it's kind of like that, a little bit different. There's not a contractual reason to do it. But in this case, my understanding is that Chile requested a trial by judge. So we went ahead and had a trial by judge. And then let's go ahead and see what happened. Let me go back over to the main screen and let's keep on talking. Yeah, What's in I'm your just, hand? Just put it in my lawyer. I'm not his lawyer now. I'm just waiting for him to get All right, I'm going to wait for your attorney, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Jose Castro, 23CR, 015. Good morning, Albert. I'm just a fellow. Dude looks like a beast. Good morning, Michael. Me, I'm Hey, you think this guy works out, Alan? Oh, I think he's not been known to get in the gym a time or two. <laughs> so I have signed two major requests that permit recording or photographing these proceedings, but I have not granted any other requests to record or live stream these proceedings. So I need Mr. DeCastro and everybody else who wants to stay in the courtroom to surrender their phones. So you see that. So everybody, I just want you to see something. You can already see. And by the way, look, I... I don't have any skin in the game. Like, I'm not here to criticize the court. But clearly, the court already knows that Chile likes to record things. And his lawyer's sitting there whispering stuff to him. But the court is literally saying, you need to disarm. You need to take away any video recording equipment that you have that's on your body. Alan, have you ever been in court and ever seen anything like that happen before? Um... I've seen it where that's sort of the standard operating procedure of the court where they say you can't use your phone or else you're going to be uh, in trouble. But uh, I've never quite seen it where they actually make you give up your phone. That that one is new to me. So, so Alan, just so you know, like between you and me, I've been getting a lot of uh, feedback from people thinking that, hey, this court's biased. They already made up their mind before this whole thing went down. So I just wanted to put that out there for the viewers. So let's go ahead and get back into this. Hold on one second. Here we go. We're going to keep on, keep on playing what the judge has to say. Or you can leave. Or you can leave. <laughs> hey, Mr. DeCastro, empty all of his pockets. Okay. Yeah, empty your pockets, pockets and give up your phones to the judge. I have to give you my phones? Yeah. My phones have to be given away off. Yeah. I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. Sorry. You already are. Right? You already are. I'll see. No. I'm not going to get into this guy, though. I'll get into someone else. No. No. They're going to go to my marshal. So really quick, everybody. <clears throat> we can see there, there's a, the colloquy. So, Alan, you see the, the court saying, hey, give us your phone. Give the phone to my marshal. And he's he's already snapping back at her, getting her upset. So we know that originally when when he showed up, it was a 90-day suspended sentence. <clears throat> and as soon as he started talking, the court went ahead and gave him what I think double and not suspended. So he's gone for six months. So everybody put it in the comments if you think that was fair. But Alan, I just wanted to kind of see like, have you ever seen anything like that ever happen before? Well, it's rare. Let me put it like that. Um it's uh, typically a, a court doesn't do something sua sponte, which is uh, on its own accord, you know. And here, my uh, it seems like that uh, the uh, uh, plea deal that uh, the, the uh, agreement that had been uh, made with the DA's office uh, was uh, essentially uh, 
avoided by the court? Well, I have these, uh, so, you know, I have these two sides. Like one is saying that we're chili occultists and that we have other people saying the court exceeded their authority. So, I don't know. You see the comments there. I, I just want everybody to like, I'm a, I'm a first amendment guy. So I want both sides to my, 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 my assumption is, is most of the people who don't like Chile are family members of police officers who were fired after he reported them for, uh, with video and for, f you know, getting them busted for violating people's rights. So I want both sides to, so it says very fair. They didn't want a phone to ring and interrupt the proceedings. <laughs> you see that, Helen? I do. So, look, I've been to court a lot. I've been practicing law for almost two decades. I've never had a judge say, hey, I'm afraid your phone might ring. Hand me over your phone. Have you ever had that happen? Well, I, I've been told I had to turn off my phone. I've never been uh, told that I had to turn in my phone. All right, copy that. All right. So let me go back and uh, let's keep going on this. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. So I'm not going to permit you to... Hold on. Guys, hold on. This is kind of important, okay? I was talking to Alan about this, and I actually created a slideshow, so this is kind of important. So... Oops, my bad. We may have to, uh, here we go. Here's a slideshow. All right. So can you speak freely in court? So Alan, talk about this. This guy just called a police officer, a pig in front of the judge. So I wanted to get into this. So first I'm going to just say what I got to say. So you don't have to make a statement. You don't have to uh, say anything. That's why you have a lawyer, right? And you have a right to go outside and talk to your lawyer outside the presence of the court if there's a problem. Now, the big problem that I have with this from a legal point of view is that the police are part of the prosecutorial team. So there's a, there's a torch of prosecutorial power that gets passed along from the police to the prosecutor and ultimately to a jury. And what I'm seeing here is the court is not happy because basically Chile is calling the law enforcement officer a pig, which means basically he's calling the court a pig in the eyes of the court. So that's something I want you guys to look at. Alan, what do you have to say about that? Well, you know, I um, would say, you know, I'm, I'm not a criminal defense attorney, but uh, I imagine that I would advise people to uh, not antagonize the court uh, before a sentencing hearing. <laughs> Um, but, um, I, uh, you know, um, at the end of the day, um, Chile wasn't actually, um, my understanding is Chile wasn't, uh, um, he wasn't, uh, penalized for what he said regarding the bailiff or the, I think it, I think it was the bailiff and rather he was, uh, you know, the judge just simply, used her discretion to um, uh, up his sentence beyond that which uh, the DA had originally agreed upon. However, you know, I think it, uh, I think we need to uh, clarify though that, uh, look, the courtroom is what is not a public forum. There are a lot of places where you can say whatever you want to say, right? The park, yeah. outside the court on the sidewalk you know the sidewalk outside a courthouse is a very uh is a traditional place where you're allowed to say all sorts of things you know and uh uh and you know voice your frustrations with the police for example however inside a courtroom i mean that's uh considered a non-public forum and inside a non-public forum like a courtroom you know ultimately the uh a government court has a um, has the authority to uh, you know uh, regulate what's being said in there uh, for the decorum of the court and just so that uh, you know a business can be conducted 
inside of there. So while, again, it doesn't appear like uh, Chile was overtly penalized for uh, uh, what he said, and, you know, uh, had the judge wanted to, um, you know, say something about that, uh, expressly, you know, sanction him for what he said, you know, that would be within our authority. Um, so, so, Alan, what you're saying is <clears throat> that the court is not a normal public forum, like, for example, a traffic stop when you're standing 20 feet away, re- filming. But it, when you go to court, it's not a public forum. And, and because of that, the judge sort of rules what can be yeah, said. I mean, that's that's, that's a way of saying it, you know. I mean, it's just... Um... You know, again, this isn't precise legal analysis, but I mean, you have to think of um, being inside a courthouse as being inside the, uh, the a business, right? And that business right. might be um, the government's uh, business, but it's not quite like being outside in, you know, the um, at, at a park or outside on the steps because i mean there's no business being conducted there so the courts have found that you have the full uh, penalty of uh free speech rights out there whereas you know i mean let's just be honest though i mean if um everyone started um you know cheering or booing right in the middle of a court proceeding you know i mean nothing really could get done what if i brought in you know 20 or 30 of my friends to start, <laughs> you know, uh, protesting, you know, every time something was done, you know, I mean, you couldn't have court proceedings. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's one of the reasons why, like all my viewers, I just want you to understand something. I'm one of the original guys who used to fight traffic tickets and I won a lot of them, lost a lot of them. And I learned what was going on in the court system. And so having a guy like Alan, who's really way more grounded than me and evenly killed, is nice because you need to get a different point of view. So I'm more of the chili point of view and Alan's more probably the traditional point of view. And, and, but because I'm a lawyer, I realize, man, I got to watch myself. I better ask Alan first before I do something crazy. But at yeah. the same token, Alan and I being jarheads, we love it when there's brave guys out there fighting for their first amendment rights. And what happened here is a situation that's a little bit different. A lot of people believe that there's uh, a Supreme court right or an absolute right to film police, but the Supreme court has never found that. And in fact, the Supreme court recently ruled on a case where they basically let the guy get punished for filming. And so the only district right now that you can count on is the fifth district. Is that right, Alan? That's the only one who's made a positive. I think you may mean the Fifth Circuit. Fifth Circuit, my bad. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a few other places that have expressly ruled you have a right to sue law enforcement. But uh, even within those jurisdictions, I mean, there are public safety elements to um, th- that right. I mean, I, I, I'm not... Um, when the courts have been confronted with the uh, issue of whether you can film police, the vast majority of the courts have either avoided the question or said, yes, you do have a right to um, film the police. However, that's um, uh, that, that right is um, a balance, though, with uh, certain public safety interests. And, you know, one of those being a uh, law enforcement officer has a um you know if you get too close to one i mean there's at least an argument to um say that um you um you know the police officers are gonna know who you are you know um what if you have a weapon what if uh you're uh looking to uh, physically interfere with uh what he's doing and you know i mean that's why there are buffer rules that uh typically are uh, at issue in uh, cases like these. You know, uh, Grateful Dabs um, is uh, commenting, is there a way to appeal the decision? That was a uh, horrible bias. And uh, anyway, um, yeah, I am not 
an attorney in Nevada, but um, I, I am fairly typically have 30 days to appeal a decision. And I'd be surprised if it, uh, you know, it's got to be somewhere within that range, you know, a couple weeks, 30 days, somewhere around there, where you're allowed to appeal up to an appellate court. And here you um, would have, a, a, you know, a, his uh, criminal defense attorney, Chile's criminal defense attorney, would be able to uh, argue that um, one of two things, either A, the um, judge abused her discretion as to factual issues or uh, abused her, question, uh, her discretion um, on uh, certain legal principles. And uh, yeah, absolutely. And that would go uh, typically, at least in California and uh, um, in the federal courts in front of a three-judge panel first uh prior to and uh they would review the uh, trial court for uh, having you know basically gotten the law wrong got evidentiary issues wrong you know things like that so uh yes that's an appeal absolutely is on uh, the table well so alan <clears throat> the question that i i'm getting like not in the comments here but from people who've been calling me all day i've been able to get any work done i mean chile apparently has a lot of friends because uh, I'm I'm sure I'm going to have the largest phone bill ever in the history of my life. But the question that I'm getting is by the time he files his appeal, will it be too late? Will it have any significance? Because if the court, if the upper court grants it, I mean, let's, let's be real. Courts don't just automatically grant appeals or even decide to hear them. It could take months to years. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. Well, sure. I mean, there's a, um, for one thing, I mean, this uh, conviction is going to be on his record from now to time memorial. Um, and uh, two, I mean, I th there is a procedure to have the um, sentence uh, held in advance pending the outcome of an appeal. And by that, I mean, um, you don't go to jail until your appeal is filed. I mean, that, that's a motion that has to be filed with the court, you know, and, um, you know, I, I'm only familiar with that in California, not Nevada, so I don't want to go too much into the detail. Um, okay, hold on, hold on. Roney says that he already filed an appeal. Hey, put it in the comments if somebody can send Alan and I uh, the PDF of the appeal or get me the appellate lawyer's contact info because, you know, I just, look, my point here is, look, I'm not a Nevada lawyer. Neither is Alan. I just know Chili's like a buddy, so I want to help him in any way that I can. Alan is a friend of mine, so just so you understand the significance here. Alan, I'm a Marine. Alan's a Marine. I've said, hey, Alan, a friend of mine's in trouble. Alan's trying to provide information. We're not offering legal advice, okay? We want to find out what's going on so we can share information, so I can share information with you because I know you guys all care about Chili. I get it. Well, at least a couple of you do. I mean, most of these people here probably hate his guts because they're probably family members of bad cops who got fired. But the other ones who care about Chile, those are the people that I'm here for. I just I want to try to visit him and share information with you so you can be put at rest. He may not do everything the right way. He may make a lot of people angry. But in order to make an omelet, you have to break a lot of eggs. The good news is, is there's people out there who are level-headed uh, who want to share this information with you. So, Alan... Based upon the fact that he's already filed an appeal, what do you think? Well, um, I mean, uh, the the next step is for him to file a uh, opening brief. That, that's basically a big book that you have to write with, with the appeals court, and yeah. then the prosecution will have the right to file a um, a um, a book of their own. You know, legal brief, and then yeah. you know, then there's a reply brief, then you go up for oral argument. Yeah, you argue in front of three judges. Now, you know, it's uh, there's a few grounds that he can be uh, doing. Now, I'm not familiar with the with what the um, uh, attorney did in the trial court, but uh, I, I'd be curious to know whether Chile preserved a free speech argument. I mean, that's probably his core argument right there that uh, he has a, uh, that he, ha he was exercising his free speech rights. Now, I, I don't know 
um, the merits of that, you know, I'm not that familiar with the situation, but, uh, yeah. you know, he'd have that argument and that's the issue of law. So to be, uh, decided, uh, de novo, which is, um, a Latin for, uh, a new, which basically means the, the, the appeals court would hear that as a matter of first impression, like they, like nothing had happened in the trial court. We're just, we're looking at this the first time. And, uh, the um, free speech, you know, the, whatever you're dealing with something to know about, that's probably the easiest issue. That you can, that's the easiest state of review to prevail, prevail on. Um, yes, yeah, so it's. Um, hey, and, wait, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Alex, check this out. So Free Charlie says, why are these two talking about criminal law? They are not <laughs> defense attorneys. But as everybody knows. I used to work for the uh, city of Los Angeles prosecutor's office and I've also done criminal defense and I still do criminal defense. Uh, and uh, last time I checked free Charlie, there's no statute that says that you have to choose what type of law you want to practice if you want to help someone with a legal issue. But anyways, go ahead. Al. Al. Well, I mean, I, just to comment on my background a little bit, uh, uh, you're absolutely right. I'm not a criminal defense attorney and, uh, <laughs> I have a, oh, uh, my background is uh, primarily in constitutional law, and uh, I practice that uh, across the country in uh, various uh, federal trial courts and federal courts of appeals, um, yeah. and, as well as the U.S. Supreme Court. But um, uh, and just speaking on uh, just the basic issues of appellate procedure, you know, I mean, there is. Um, uh, you know, he's got a free speech claim. He can say that uh, the trial court erred in denying his uh, free speech claim. Hopefully, uh, his, the trial court attorney preserved that issue. I mean, I know that was uh, at least argued uh, yeah. at that hearing. So uh, I think that's probably sufficient to preserve it. Secondly, uh, he could have some sort of issue with uh, the um, with sentencing, you know, and uh, he'd say the judge abused uh, his uh, discretion or her discretion, say, in uh, um, in the uh, you know in uh, putting that uh, the uh, sentence that was given to him, you know, these are a couple of uh, avenues that uh, could be uh, done on appeal. Yeah. So, Alan, I'm I'm kind of looking at some of these comments. So, I just want to like. So there's people saying that Chile is called for the murder of police, which I know that's not true because I've actually met with them and talked to them. But uh, you can see there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. I really I want everybody to try and focus on what we're talking about, which is the narrow conversation. Chile went into court and he got a 90 days suspended sentence. That was what the prosecutor and everybody agreed. In other words, if he would have just agreed, they would have let him go. He could have got a 90 days conviction, but instead Chile fought back. I just want everybody to see what's going on. He fought back. You may know some other people who have fought back recently and, and uh, didn't do too well against uh, the system. Uh, and I just want everybody to see that. Like you're not always going to win according to the system, but, but that doesn't mean that you lost because there's still an appeal there's still the ability, like Alan says, there's a First Amendment potential argument, assuming his lawyer raised that argument for the appeal. And and there's also these other issues about being able to record police. In California, we know under 148, you can definitely record police. There's an issue about how far you have to be. Based upon the video footage that I saw it, as a lawyer and as a juror, it looked like Chile was obeying the, the officer. He was trying to stay back. Most people understand that Nevada police officers, they have uh, they have some some things going for them that other police departments don't have. So Nevada cops, they're treated like superstars. They get to eat free at casinos. They get all kinds of perks. They get free rooms at casinos if they're the top cops. So I just want everybody to understand that this isn't like L.A. where you can just like walk up to a police officer and tell him to F.O., right? If you do it here, 
the cops are treated like celebrities. So that's not going to happen. And, and the police officers in their minds think that they're celebrities. So just a little, a little bit of a difference between the two sides. But, but Alan, if he does raise the First Amendment issue, if he did raise it in his notice and, and in his actual brief, and it's preserved on the record, what do you think? I mean, we know that only the Fifth Circuit has made an affirmative finding that you're going to be able to argue that. What, what's going to happen in Nevada, in your opinion? Well, it's um, sort of interesting. I mean, I, I believe in the, um, a lot of these cases are uh, civil cases. And in a uh, civil case, those are typically uh, done to um, um, for uh, money damages. You know, uh, the classic example is the police wrongfully uh, beat somebody. And now they come back to sue those individual officers for uh, money damages. Well, there's a, a legal doctrine that's called uh, qualified immunity, which essentially means that um, the uh, court does not need to reach the issue of whether somebody is um, whether uh, something is constitutional or unconstitutional. What uh, is well, all they have to do is establish that whether an action was clearly established at the time that the law enforcement officer engaged in his conduct. And uh, to illustrate that point, um, let's just say you're, you are arrested for um, uh, filming the police. You sue, saying that was a violation of free speech rights. The court does not need to reach, and no other court in your area, you know, uh, not an appeals court, not a higher court, has said you have a right to uh, film police officers. Well, the trial court doesn't need to reach the issue of whether the constitutional rights were violated because it's not clearly established that that's a constitutional right. So... Right. And uh, this is this is lead to something here. This is a criminal case, and, and that's yeah. why the vast majority of civil rights lawsuits for uh, police misconduct uh, fails because of the qualified immunity doctrine. There's lots going on, um, but um, right here because it's a criminal case, it's honestly this is a very good chance for uh, for this issue to be reached by the courts. The reason being is that uh, in a criminal case, you're not asking for money damages. You're right. asking to have your own freedom um, and, uh, you know, these criminal charges be dismissed. So that doctrine does not apply. So I I hope that there is an appeal here if uh, for no other reason so that the um, – so that the uh, courts could reach the issue of whether there is a constitutional right to film the police. And I think that that right. is not a, a uh, that's not a controversial issue. It's just that it's so difficult for the courts to read it due to the various uh, doctrines that uh, have been uh, put in place to allow courts to avoid reach that issue in the civil context. So, you know, even if uh, this ends up being a relatively pirate victory for uh, Chile or even a loss on appeal, I think you could do a lot of good here to go up to on appeal and have a court address, uh, the Nevada State Appeals Courts address, anyway, whether there is right. a constitutional right to uh, film police, you know. So, you know, I, uh, I wish him the best here. And it's like, you know, I understand that there's a lot of people that uh, – are uh, against uh, Chile, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot yeah. of people that had feelings towards police auditing. But uh, you know, the uh, Supreme Court, uh, the various appeals courts, the jurisprudence we live under has been created by people that are not necessarily uh, people that uh, I agree with. Um, for example, there's a famous case uh, uh, where the ACLU. Uh, represent a group of uh, neo-Nazis that want to uh, march through uh, Skokie, uh, which is a city in Illinois. And uh, the ACLU, you, uh, ACLU attorneys happen to be um, um, uh, 
Jewish origin and uh, heritage, and uh, they represent them because they believed that a everyone needs representation, and b people uh, people need uh, you know people have a, a right to free speech. Yeah. Right now, the ACLU is representing the uh, National Rifle Association from the U.S. Supreme Court. They did that just a couple of days ago, and uh, the ACLU has publicly disavowed the uh, uh, NRA's legal position. I, I primarily am a Second Amendment attorney, so I uh, just uh, I, I'm with um, you know I, I work very heavily in uh, firearms rights, and uh, yet you see that uh, the ACLU, which is completely contrary to uh, our position is yep. uh, representing them. And so what I would suggest to the many people that are not necessarily on board with uh, either uh, Chile or maybe Chile's conduct in this instance is to quell your passions and yes. allow yes. yourself to look at the overarching legal rule that uh, has been established here by the trial court and uh, more importantly, in this uh, subsequent appeal, and you'll see that this is a um, you know, this is an important issue. Whatever side that you take on it, this is a very important issue. Um, that's uh, my CPA. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. And, it, yeah. I appreciate it. If you got to go, yeah. I, that's fine. But no, you can take way. me off screen so I can answer this. All right, stand by. <laughs> Turn your uh, volume down, too, Alan. So everybody. Uh, <laughs> Let me just go through all this stuff while I can here. So, look, I understand you got a lot of people who really just yeah. people who really hate Chile. Wow. Um, all I can tell you is, look, a lot of people hated William Wallace. Only th less than three percent of our population actually took part in the revolution. Yeah. Everyone else was a fence rider. Wow. They, they just straddled the fence. And that's how most people are today. They all sit around. They sit on the fence. They just see what's going to happen. But the alpha males, the alpha males, the guys like, like me, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute Alan because hopefully that's better. Like the alpha males, the guys who believe in protecting their wives and children and their friends and their Marine brothers. Well, hopefully you were a Marine. If you weren't, you know, I forgive you. But uh, yeah, we, we, we think more like a William Wallace. And it, I, it doesn't mean that I have to agree with everything Chile does. He doesn't agree with everything that I do. But he doesn't have anybody to advocate for him right now. And I disagree. I don't think he's ever tried to call for anyone's uh, deaths or anything like that. I, I, I've seen it with my own eyes. You, you can say that you think that, and that's cool. Uh, but I've heard him specifically say that he doesn't want law enforcement officers to die. I have a lot of friends who are in law enforcement or peace officers. You know, a lot of Marines, they end up joining uh, law enforcement because our mentality is we want to protect people. So... We don't just, you know, we don't, we don't join because we want to make, make a quota, but yeah, it's true. Once you start getting on the payroll, you know, and, and you're getting close to retirement, I could see how easy it would be to violate someone's rights. And so that's one of the issues that I'm, I'm hoping we can talk about. Now, look, we're not going to have a lot of time to discuss everything. So let me just go through the comments. Look, guys, forgive me. I'm not chilly. Okay. I'm a lawyer. I'm a real lawyer. I do, I do personal injury, bodily injury claims, civil rights. But my, my passion is Second Amendment, First Amendment, Constitution. So just bear with me. I know there's a lot of people who are going to start flaming me, saying, oh, you're not a real lawyer. You're not this, you're not that. Everybody, I want you to understand something really quick. I became a lawyer on the law study program, okay? Slept on park benches. I was a Marine. I'm, I'm a do or die kind of guy. I did go to law school after I was already a member of the bar. I got my law degree. So just so you understand something. I passed the bar exam without going to your beloved academic institution where they teach you to hate America and that, you know, all the, all the other stuff you get with academia. I didn't do that. I just was a guy who worked construction, got injured in the core, and then ended up finding a way to become a lawyer. But my background is in sales and marketing. I just happen to love the law. So you too can become a lawyer. And all these people who tell you you have to have an academic degree or whatever, well, look at all the academics. They've all sold out to the deep state, right? You got Fauci, all these other guys. So just follow your heart. Don't listen to the flamers. I'm going to bring Alan back now. Alan, I'm going to put you back off mute and put you back on. Okay, Alan. So here's what I think we should do.
because I know you're super busy. I'm going to go ahead and look at some of these comments and we can just start talking to the comments. So check this out. Chile has said before that veterans are stupid for joining the military. That's a fact. Yeah. Guess what? I agree. <laughs> I don't know about you, Alan, but I joined the Marine Corps because I wanted to serve my brothers. I don't give an F about anything else. I would have never met you. I would have never met Alan. I would have never met the Leathernecks Motorcycle Club. I would have never had a couch to sleep on if I hadn't joined my beloved core. So anyways, go ahead, Alan. Tell, tell us what you think about that statement because well, your, your you opinion know, might be different than mine. Go ahead. Um, you're certainly entitled to your opinion. I came on, <laughs> I've come on here uh, to uh, discuss the relevant free speech <laughs> issues, and uh, I'm happy to uh, take – uh, any questions about, uh, you know, free speech jurisprudence as it's uh, evolving throughout the country. Copy and, that. Uh, and, you know, part of the free speech, though, is that uh, Mr. Shigora is uh, entitled to his opinion. Copy that. You know, so what's great about this country. So, guys, I just want you to understand something. See, Alan and I are not the same. And Chile and I are not the same. But we can come together on certain things. like. Freedom, patriotism, love of country. And those are the things that I want to focus on today. The right to defend yourself, right to defend your family. You may have a different sexual thing going on with you. You may have some other thing going on religiously, but that doesn't mean at the end of the day that we don't support each other when it really matters. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Let's take a look at a couple other things here. Uh, let me see here. So this guy says, Chile is 100 right. There is no man can run roughshod on me. Not anymore. Well, look, man, Brick, Jonesy, 1,000%. But how you do it, I don't want you guys to end up in a cell saying this to me. I want you to contact me and first and hopefully, or Alan, so we can find a way to not let that happen and still get the same result, which is freedom, liberty, patriotism. What do you have to say about that, Alan? Well, uh, absolutely. I mean, you cer certainly have a uh, right to uh, exercise. You have any rights you can exercise, but I mean, look, let's just be honest here. It's you show a little bit of discretion so you don't end up incarcerated. <laughs> right. And then so, of course, they have the the traditional, oh, you resisted arrest. So everybody, just so you know, like. I, I've done both angles, prosecutor and and defense side, criminal side. Um, guess what, guys? The catch-all, if somebody doesn't like the guy they're arresting, is to charge him with a 148, which in California is resisting, obstructing, and delaying. Everybody, everybody knows that. If you're that ridiculous, I'm almost to where I'm thinking, why, why am I even letting this guy on my thread? Do you really think that cops don't regularly charge people with resisting arrest when they can't come up with something else? And how do you resist arrest? What are you being arrested for? So, Alan, that's one of the things I wanted to kind of talk to you about, like resisting arrest. But what are you being if you're standing 20 to 15 feet away and you're filming and you're in and you're within your First Amendment rights, but you're saying, hey, pig, copper, a hole. Right. And then the guy comes and attacks you because you're exercising your First Amendment right to be a dick. Right. Um, how are you resisting arrest? That's what I'm trying to understand. What's the arrest for? Is the arrest for filming? is the arrest for what is it for? Right. This is why, by the way, Alan, most of these cases where they argue resisting, obstructing the land get reversed on appeal, but I wanted to hear what you had to say. Well, I, I would say this, I mean, uh, this legal issue is um, right now the advent of cell phones has uh, been, um, you know, fairly revolutionary in uh, just a lot of aspects of our lives. And one of those things is the fact that now people have a portable means of access to uh, film. And so, and, you know, that's something in the past, you know, 10, 15 years that uh, has been a regular part of uh, people's everyday lives. So as, as a result of that, uh, there's been a explosion in the um, cases that have dealt with um, whether or not um, you um, uh, have a right to uh, film and have a right specifically to film law enforcement. 
And so uh, this is a, um, uh, you know, this is an evolving bit of law. That's what I'm saying. So I would um, strongly suggest that uh, unless you're willing to, you know, go to court and, you know, fight the system, that uh, you exercise a certain degree of discretion when, uh, you know, <laughs> when uh, filming a uh, officer in the uh, middle of, uh, you know, his, uh, uh, of conducting his operations, you know, because yeah. I think the counter to uh, what, you uh, um, the counter to uh, the argument uh, that you have a uh, unfettered right to uh, argue to to film the police is you know within a certain distance. You know, I yeah. I know that uh, if I, I'm at the gym or someplace else and I'm just uh, you know someone's very close to me, I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable because you know if I have a back turned to them, well you know they could uh, end up uh, you know uh, getting within my uh, personal space. You know. Uh, Attack yeah. me, etc. cetera, with, um, um, out me being able to do anything about it, you know? And so yeah. I, uh, with it, uh, and, you know, the issue is, you know, I don't, uh, t to my knowledge anyway, there is not a specific uh, amount of feet that is considered constitutionally permissible by the courts. You know, there, I'm sure there are department policies on that. But that's uh, analytically distinct from... Uh, there being a um, uh, an actual constitutionally permissible buffer that's been clearly established. So, you know, but I think that uh, the reality is, you know, I know on my phone and a lot of modern phones now, you know, you have a Zoom function. You yeah. can film from a reasonable distance away, hold the government accountable, while at the same time allowing uh, the course of... Uh, government, you know, and affairs take place without you having to uh, proactively throw yourself into the fray, as it were. Hey, you know? hey, hey, just really quick, Alan, I got to laugh. So we have Free Charlie. Looks like he's got an LAPD badge saying embarrassing, calling yourself a Marine. <laughs> I mean, I just had to laugh, everybody, because, you know, you become a Marine by graduating boot camp. So, you know, it's not like in Navy SEAL training where, you could be buddy, you know, where Dan Crenshaw can, you know, try to like take your trident from you like he did to Eddie Gallagher. But uh, I just I just thought that was funny. Uh, so, Alan, what do you think about this whole you don't see the connection be between soldiers and war who let you out? OK, you saw that. Let's just go through the list. All of your questions would have been answered if you had researched before. OK, so I don't know who Jim Finch is, but Alan and I have both watched the video and we're just here to try to answer questions from other people who aren't lawyers. Now, J Jim, it looks like you might be a lawyer perhaps, or maybe a cop who got who lost your job. And I, and I understand that because Chile's gotten a lot of cops fired, unfortunately for them. Uh, but we're not here to try to like take sides other than just report the facts and the law as we know it. So I just wanted you all to know that, like, I'm not like this guy, Hey, copper pig, all that. No, no, that's not how I roll. And that's certainly not how Alan rolls. And we have a lot of friends and family members who are Marines and sheriff's deputies. So we definitely are not the same people. OK, uh, we appreciate what you have to say, uh, but you're dead wrong about us doing our research. We've done the research. We're trying to engage the audience so they can ask us questions because what we don't want is for other people to end up in a similar situation. We want to provide helpful information and protect and defend the constitution of the United States. That's what we're here to do. So, um, so, okay. So odd socks asks, have you actually seen Chili's rap sheet? Okay. So guys, we're here to talk. So I have, and Alan has, I'm sure we already understand the background of all the key players. And we know if you're a cop, if I did a pitch this motion, I'd probably find 30 or 40 charges against you. And you, I'm sure you're going to say they were all bullshit, right? Think about it. So everybody just try to approach this from sort of a, a neutral point of view. We're here to talk about what happened in court. So right now, okay, so somebody said, oh, never graduated basic. Okay, so guys, so Free Charlie apparently thinks that enlisted Marines had to go to the basic school, which is where Marine officers go. So uh, 
yeah, you know, uh, our basic school is school of infantry or in Alan's case, tanker training when we still had tanks, uh, that's our basic school. And, uh, and, you know, we love our Marine officers, uh, but, but we love ourselves and our fellow enlisted men even more. So, uh, let me see here. Uh, broadcasting cooperative says you being one of his mods, are you denying what Chile said about veterans? Okay. Look, I, I already know what he's got to say about vets, but the, the question is, do you really think I give an F? I mean, think about it. Do you really think I care? I'm a Marine. Okay. I'm not some pussy who went to some academic institution. All right. I'm a jarhead. I don't care what he had to say. I've met him as a person. He's a good guy. He loves people. I can tell that he cares about people. He may have done some stupid shit and that's on him. But the bottom line is, is that we're all entitled to forgiveness and we're all entitled to make mistakes. And I'm not here to talk about all that, guys. Alan and I are here to talk about what happened in court today, the First Amendment part. So, and by the way, it's getting, it's been, it's been about a little while here. It's been about 51 minutes. I start losing people after about 50 minutes. So I'm going to go through these questions, Alan. I'm going to go ahead and put them up on the screen and I'm going to let you see if there's any that you want to answer and if not, I'm going to close this out. We're going to reschedule this for, you know, tomorrow, guys. I'll, I'll do another one tomorrow because we only did about five minutes of the video so far. But, uh, okay, so just keep reading them, Alan. That's what I'm saying. How does a cop have uh, a I, I, I think I'm, I, I'm fine if you are, Mike. All right, copy that. All right, people working hard for accountability. Medley, <laughs> Smedley Butler agrees. Who is this guy? What the heck? Citizens Broadcasting Cooperative, send me a text message. You're somebody that I can deal with. You understand what's really going on. Everybody, um, Google Sm Google Smedley Butler sometimes so you know who he is, and you'll understand where, where I'm coming from. Well, what about you, Michael, I appreciate you having me on, but I yep. uh, actually have some clients I have to attend to. So, um, uh, well, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening, and, uh, well, we'll see what happens here. All right, guys. So I right, appreciate it. Everyone. I appreciate everybody checking in and let me see here. So we want our cameras like our L our one a yes, we do. And then we got, and the pigs don't like it no matter how much they claim to work. Eline, why are you discussing to Castro? If you know nothing about the videos that he's posted, I've actually seen most of his videos, but the problem is, is it's really hard to look at hundreds and hundreds of videos and still run a law practice. Uh, let me see here. How long were you in the Corps? I was in the Corps, I would say, with home awaiting orders, a little under a year, guys. But I, I'd like to know why that matters. I was injured in training and had surgery and was discharged. So anyways, a lot of these people think that how long you served is super important. But, you know, my dad was also a jarhead and uh, I grew up as a Marine Joining the Marine Corps was just part of the family tradition. So anyways, but uh, anyways, let's go on here. So Chile doesn't belong in jail. Yeah, I kind of agree. Like he was, he was given a 90 day uh, sentence with, uh, I think the sentence was sort of set aside or whatever, but I think what he did is he really angered the court uh, and the court went ahead and threw the book at him. But what I didn't see is there was no, uh, what do they call that? Contempt. There were no contempt proceedings. So it could be that the court abused their discretion. The issue is, is I'm only licensed to practice law in California. So I can't give you a legal opinion on what would happen in Nevada. Uh, let me see here. So free a itch capiche. Are you a cop sucker? Okay. All right. Let's look here talking about every angle i'm just going through i want to make sure everybody gets their stuff on the screen because unlike chili's videos i'm not able to get the sidebar to show up but i want everybody's comments to show because i'm a free speech guy you know so let's see here let's talk about your service why don't you go on and ask if their questions look guys i have i got no issues the training i went through when i was so i was uh i worked full-time i dropped out of school when i was like 15 got a job as a painter's apprentice. My dad said, you can either go to school or you get a job. And I said, I'm going to do both dad. Cause you know, my dad and I was kind of a weird relationship. He was messed up from Vietnam. He just died a couple of years back from agent orange from non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we had a really tight, tough relationship. But at the end of the day, he was a freaking Marine. Come on. 
He was a combat Marine. He did two tours. He volunteered to go back. I grew up, all his buddies were Marines. I was always at the gun range from like six years old on. He had me in judo as a kid. And how could I not love the guy? He taught me how to be a man. So look, Chile may not like veterans. Chile may not like cops. Chile may not like a lot of people. I don't give a fuck who he likes. What I care about is that he supports the Constitution of the United States. Now, if he's screwing up and doing it the wrong way, well, I'm here as a lawyer to help give everyone some tips based upon what I know so they don't end up in jail. But at the end of the day, one man's uh, terrorist is, is another man's freedom fighter. So let's just go through here. Feelings enforcement. Let's. Uh, I really like Citizens Broadcasting. They really have some great stuff. Uh, so Scrubzilla says Chile was arrested for calling the bailiff a pig. Uh, she didn't want to be on YouTube. Okay, I understand that, guys. I, I get it. He shouldn't have probably called the bailiff a pig. Uh, for those who watched the video and don't think Chile complied, uh, you need a bigger screen. Okay, so what BZ Watchdog, I think, is talking about is the actual original arrest. So Chile, unlike other videos where he won't back up, he actually did back up. And I believe that he did stay within 15 to 20 feet away. But look, guys, here's what you got to understand. There's the law and then there's politics. In in Nevada, cops get free uh, hotels. They get They get to eat free food at the hotels. They're looked at as gods in Nevada. So it's not like L.A. where it, cops are terrified, right? They're like, get me out of here. Move me to Tennessee, right? Get me back to the old days, right? It's a different situation. And so in my opinion, Chile's got a lot of balls coming coming to Nevada and doing what he's doing in Nevada. Because, of course, you're gonna you're looking at jail time. It, it, they're almost making him into a martyr. What do you think? Put it in the comments if you think the chili looks like a martyr because of the way they handled this. Let me see here. Uh, and I'll just keep on putting up comments. Look guys, I don't want to get into like battles between people. I'm not going to post those comments. I, I'm not looking for people to fight with each other. We're all Americans. We should be, unless you're an illegal alien, then you should go the F back home. But if you're a real American and you weren't invited up here by a non-governmental organization living off of tax, your own, your money to bring illegals up here, you're somebody I want to hear from. So let's see here. Uh, Turner V driver. We have the right to film. pig. <laughs> so guys, one thing, it's not smart to call them pigs. It, obviously you're going to do what you, you want to do, but it's just not a smart move. I mean, these it's, it's a problem because remember the court, the entire justice system is part of that. I mean, who signs the court's check, who signs the cops check? It's all government agencies. So if you really want to make serious change, uh, the only way you're going to do it is by being civil, in my opinion, unless you want to go and riot like the BLM guys and probably make change that way too. But uh, I don't know. For me, I prefer the peaceful deal. So let me just keep on putting these. He claims he was in the core, but can't back it up. Oh, so, so Charlie, look, bro. You can go to like marines.com or military.com and just like type in the last name Eli and you'll see Paul Eli and you'll see Michael Eli. We both serve. We were both Marines. So just, I'm not going to get too much into that. As a lawyer, if I was to say something like that, I could be disbarred for lying. And the only, look, I'm not like, I never served in combat. I was, I was a grunt, but I was a Marine before I went in. The Marine Corps is, is what made me who I am today. That training, that spirit and discipline, that brotherhood is what made me who I am. And what? And uh, there's also a guy, I think his name is Lucas. Look him up, L-U-C-A-S. I think he lied. He was like 15 or 16. He lied about his age. He got to Iwo Jima, fell on a grenade to protect his fellow Marines and got discharged. I think he was in like six months or something. Was he a Marine? Uh, Free Charlie, was he a Marine? Or because he fell on a grenade, does that make him more of a Marine? or less of a Marine. Anyways, let's go back on to, I don't brag about what I did. Well, that tells me that you're just a coward piece of garbage, but anyways, let's get back into the real world. Okay. So Michael, I'm loving your laugh trolls. Okay. Uh, he was arrested because he was guilty of obstructing a police officer and resisting arrest. Okay. So tequila mockingbird, let's get into that. So if I'm filming you and exercising my first amendment, right, right. If I'm filming you and exercising my first amendment, right and you're an officer, and, and I'm 15, 20 feet away, and you say, hey, you're under arrest. You're, you're resisting. So just think about that. So 
from a legal point of view, yeah, there's probably grounds to convict, but there are appealable issues here. And because of that, uh, we may have some, you know, they may get reversed. So, and also keep in mind that, you know, you have Soros prosecutors and politically appointed prosecutors now who will just convict and arrest people based on politics, according to what many people say. So don't, don't just keep that in mind. Okay. So everybody, it's getting to the hour point. I can't do the whole chili thing. I, I'm working on an appellate brief right now. So I want to go through these comments really quick and put them up on the screen. So you have an opportunity uh, to respond and, and put them in the comments. So I have an opportunity to come back with other lawyers who are better than me, like experts who know more than me. So I can try to answer these questions because again, you know, the law is kind of like the Sears tower, you know, it's this big giant thing. What I do, personal injury and a little bit of criminal defense might be in a couple file boxes in the basement, but there's this huge thing called law and every single office is filled to the roof with all these different briefs and, and boxes. So just understand that, that I'm not going to be able to answer every single question, but I want to. And the ad hominis comments and stuff from people, you know, you just, just leave it at the door guys. Cause I don't really, it's, it's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about whether or not this guy has rights. Like Alan said, the ACLU is helping someone who is a Second Amendment person because they're so terrified about what the government's doing, uh, restricting free speech rights. So really quick, let's go through all this. So we have, I am willing to be interviewed as I was in the courtroom. So tomorrow, let's OTVO, reach out to me after this. And I'm going to, you and I can do a, let's do like a 30 minute show tomorrow. Because I just want people to know what happened from your perspective as a courtroom visitor. So let's OV, OTVO tomorrow. That's going to be our guy. That's going to be what we do. And uh, if and when I do, I back it up. Okay, Free Charlie, sure you will. I know plenty of Navy SEAL buddies who never served in the Navy SEALs too. Okay, let's see here. Is Alan still talking? I was falling asleep. Alan, do you hear that? BZ Watchdog. So I think BZ Watchdog was probably a freaking Marine. I kind of got a feeling something's going on here. Kind of weird, you know? Okay. So let's go. Uh, Chile doesn't audit anymore. Anyway, Chile does. Oh, doesn't. I'm assuming you're saying doesn't audit. He just hawks trifolds. Okay. That's an opinion, but guys, that's not why we're here. I mean, you wouldn't even be here if the guy wasn't popular for sticking up for what he thinks is the first amendment. So just think about that. We don't even have this conversation. You guys can hate him. You can hate me. That's fine. But guess what? If you were to call me tomorrow and say someone harmed your brother or your sister or whatever, I would probably be looking at life because I would be the guy there that was helping you because that's how I roll. So because I don't really care what your politics are. All right, let's get down here. Right on watchdog. Arr, OK, let's see here. Uh, the cop admitted the chili both backed up and moved to the car. OK, right. That was the whole point I was making. So, look, judges are people, too. He obviously angered her. She probably saw some of his videos, which by any academic's perspective would be considered to be like anti-feminist or right. Cause he, he talks about things like women aren't physically as strong as men, like common sense things that are sort of prohibited by the mainstream press and academia. So that could be a problem too. Let's see what else is going on. So we have King Braveheart laughing his head off free to elite laws. Free to elite laws. Where's that one? Free to elite laws, Chris. All right, Chris. Thanks for joining us today. I know you guys are all busy trying to make it happen. That's awesome. Why are you so obsessed with them? What's the point? Yeah. So let's see here. What's going on here? No touchy copper. Always. Everybody, stop. Talk, stop chatting. Uh, stop typing, please. We'll we'll re, we'll re we'll recontinue because I want to put everybody on the screen. So stop typing so I get all these because I want to be able to answer these tomorrow. LOL, Jim isn't a lawyer or a cop. Okay, good. Not cop or lawyers, press. Oh, Jim Finch. I think I know who this guy is. Hey, Jim, it's all good, man, but you don't have to attack me. I've seen all the videos. I'm just talking about the First Amendment, you know, but you can do whatever you want. It's all good, man. Julie never got a cop fired. Show proof that he did. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's a fair statement. Uh, I've seen that plenty of cops have been transferred after he's filed interpersonnel complaints. And you can find that information yourself. It's it's available online, but we can have that conversation on another day. Okay, Chili knows who Jim Fitch is. Okay, great. Glad to know you, Jim. 
Great. We don't need tyrants. That's a fact. Already got plenty of those. BlackRock, right? We already have corporations that decide what our news is. Okay. So much hate for the wrong reasons. You know, Scrubzilla, that's the issue that I have too, is that we've seen how these big corporations have been able to turn the people against each other while they're eating our lunch. Uh, so just think about that, everybody. Chile has never got a single cop fired. Okay. Well, Mr. Shigura, that's your opinion. Um, and, and Mike Honcho says the same thing. Hey, look, and look, and if you guys have evidence that he has not gotten a cop uh, transferred or moved to another department or they had to quit their jobs, I'd love to see that because I'm all ears. But based on what I've seen with my own eyes and personnel records, yes, police officers have been moved around after he's gotten involved. And let me see here. Uh, Jim Finch knows more about Chile than anyone. Is that uh, Chile's old business partner, Jim Finch? Because if so, it's like, guys, do it, take it somewhere else. All right. So let's see here. You're not reporting the basic facts of the case properly. Thanks, Jim. Is that your opinion as a uh, certified law student or what's going on? Okay. So let Chile out. Paul Ticket, I agree. There's no reason why the guy should be in jail. He's got a really cute little dog. That poor dog is suffering. I think the court should take that into consideration as well. The man gives me hope for a change. You know, Chris, look, a lot of people, before I even knew who Chili was, were contacting me saying, you got to watch this guy's videos. And I agree, the guy is an inspiring guy. There's no question about it. There wouldn't be hundreds of people in this uh, podcast right now, or however, however many there are, if he wasn't on both sides. They say no, uh, there's no such thing as bad press, right? Well, here's an example. So let's see here. Namor. Oh, yes, he did in Ohio. Yeah, King Braveheart. We both know what really happened here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've done the research. I'm a pretty decent lawyer. Been able to support a wife and two kids for quite a bit of time. I wouldn't just be talking out my butt. Okay, let me see here. Uh, Brick. I don't need a tyrant. Agree with that. Amen. Not in my America. Oh, raw. Crooked cops like the camera is bad. So that is a problem, Brian, is uh, you have the old school law enforcement mentality where, oh, you're recording me. And then we've seen these videos where cops just throw people on the ground, smash their heads. And they go, oh my gosh, you fell, poor guy, not knowing they were being recorded. And when I got pulled out of my car by a West Covina cop and got the crap beat out of me over a parking ticket, which is why I'm a lawyer today, that's what inspired me the most. Other than being told by my dad and my family members, you like to argue you should be a, a lawyer. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen what law enforcement officers do, but here's the problem. This is where we diverge, Brian, and a lot of other people. It's the politicians who are passing these laws. They're forcing the cops to enforce them at the risk of losing their pensions, right? Losing their pensions and their ability to support their wife and kids if they don't do it. And they throw these cops under the bus like cannon fodder every day of the week. Eric Gardner, I can't breathe. What was that over? It was over a loose cigarette. Store owners are complaining because the government wants to raise a cigarette tax. They always want to tax you to death. So what do the cops do? They don't want to lose their job. So they strangle this guy and kill him over a loose cigarette. Think about that. Guys driving back and forth, you know, from like New Jersey to sell loose cigarettes. Think about that. So I want you guys to understand, I understand the cops are enforcing laws, but they also took an oath to uphold the Constitution. They should be somewhat educated in the law and understand peace and the concept of what the Constitution is. You don't choke some guy to death over a loose cigarette. What you do is you don't enforce an unjust law. You just don't do it. And you quit your job or you let them fire you rather than enforce a law that forces you to take someone's life over a loose cigarette. That's what I want. I want people to start thinking like the Marine Corps. He's like, you better start freaking thinking there, yo. That's what I want. I want you to think. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so I don't hate Chili. He's just a con man. Okay, well, that's your opinion. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who think that. Uh, Pam retired. Even Chili admitted it on his filings. You know, you say that he admitted things. Nobody's providing evidence, so I'm just going to try to ignore that. Why isn't the Constitution used to invoke the federal? In the lawsuit amount, one million higher. Wanda, I'm not sure what you mean, but put it in the comments with some links and I'll try to figure it out for you. Chili's own video show him causing confrontation. Well, yeah, he sure does. Yeah. I see other videos of a lot of people causing confrontation. 
I see people saying that you have to stay home and wear a mask and uh, have your business destroyed uh, because uh, some big, uh, large corporation paid my campaign a lot of money to say that. So I don't, I don't understand where you're coming from. I've seen a lot of lives destroyed. I saw a woman who was handcuffed in Uvalde who was able to escape and rescue her kids. Guess what? Child Protective Services took her children away. That's the kind of stuff you should be concerned about, in my opinion. But that's just me. All right, so let's just keep on going. I'm a mom with a son in prison. Sweetheart, odd socks, okay. Trying to find stuff that's going to help us here. Uh, DeCastro knows who Jim Finch is and who Shigura are. Okay, that's amazing that he knows that. Congratulations. Back the blue till it happens to you. Yeah, I see that. Honestly, guys, I never really worry about... Uh, law enforcement, anything like that. I'm always prepared to protect myself and my family. Uh, you know, the police are always five minutes away when you need them. And by that time, your whole family could be massacred. So you men, you real men, you should consider moving to a state where you have an actual right to defend your family and you won't get arrested by a prosecutor. If someone breaks into your house and tries to rape your wife and you end up taking their life in defense of hers or your children. So, just think about that. If someone breaks into your house, are you confident right now? Or if someone was on the subway right now in New York and was harassing women and had a big giant record of harassing women and knocking people out and some former Marine came along and put that person in a chokehold, a rear naked, and you know that person died who was also on drugs, are you sure that that Marine, that former Marine wouldn't have been arrested uh, for that? Because if that's you, you maybe, maybe you should think about moving to a state where you have the right to defend your family. All right, so let's just keep on going. All right, so it's already over an hour and 11 minutes. I, I love Chili's audience because you guys will stay here for all day long. <laughs> so we got somebody saying Chili is a moron, a 50-year-old toddler. Okay, is that his former business partner? Then we have, is there an unspoken contract used in the lower courts? So Wanda, who knows? You know, who knows? All I know is that there is a law and you, you mean you need to, you want to keep it well. Like Thomas Aquinas says, people who are in positions of power should know the law and mean to keep it well. All right. So let's just keep going. Let's, let's go OTVO. I agree. We should overturn Terry versus Ohio, by the way. All right. And let's just keep going. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom real quick here. Guys, man, there's so many damn comments. Holy crap. Look at this. All right, I tried to get on the Chili webpage. It wasn't working. Okay, guys, put it in the comments if there's problems with Chili servers or any problems like that. I'm going to try and find out more about what's going on with the guy, see if there's a way I can help him, at least let him know you guys are thinking about him. Maybe bring him a care package or something like they used to do in Vietnam. You know, the Red Cross would come and deliver you a care package. And then I got, uh, he acted like one. Let me see here, thumbs up. Attack on free speech. I'm going backwards. Backwards reverse here. Arr! You see here. Uh, how can we help Chile? Okay. Look, I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop about uh, right now here. So age go. How can we help Chile? The best way to help Chile is, is to obviously buy his cop cards. I'm, I'm going to try to find out if they're still going to be delivered. But keep on supporting him. You know, buy his cop cards. And I'm going to see if I can look, I'm not licensed to practice law in Nevada guys. So I'll see if the court will let me meet with them just as like a friend to try to get some info from, but I'm worried about the guy. I don't want to, I don't want anybody to be in jail, you know, unless they're an illegal alien who snuck across the border who get free phones and free everything and protection from politicians and they rape and massacre our families. We can't say anything about it. Those are the ones that shouldn't be in our country, but people who grew up here, they have a damn right to speak. And I'm here to support them. And I'm even here to support these people who, uh, who uh, try to like say that I'm not a real Marine because I didn't serve long enough, you know, but I have a 70% disability rating that says otherwise. But I, what I'm getting at is, I, look, I support his right to speak. And like the ACLU doesn't support the Second Amendment, they'll still support causes that don't necessarily align with theirs. And if you really think that I have to align exactly 100% with the cops say, or with what chili people say, then you're brain dead. Cause you know, you gotta have the right to be a free thinker. And that's what our founding fathers were all about. That being said, Alan's gone. I'm gone. Everybody 
Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to overturn Terry versus Ohio. Make sure to save because you never know when the thought police are going to take down this channel. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. They're going to do it. They don't like me. I mean, look at already what's happening. I don't even know any of these people and they hate me. So just remember that. Like, subscribe, save the channel. Check out my website and stuff. Get my contact info. If you ever have a problem, even if I can't help you with it, I'll try to help you find someone. Okay. I mainly do car accidents and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm willing to do other stuff if it means helping a brother or a sister who's got a problem. That being said, it looks like we're done here. Let me just make sure there's nothing I'm missing. My God, you guys type fast. Holy crap. All right. So I have. Uh, All right. Age go. I love you, age go. I will take him a freaking MRE and I'll tell him. Here's from all the veterans that you hate. How's that? Everybody who hates vets or who thinks that he hates vets. Let's do that. All right. Hoorah. All right. Semper Fidelis and carry on. And God bless Gunnery Sergeant Hartman.